Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey, I'm married to Josh, and we have eight children. Today I want to talk to you about food storage, particularly food storage for beginners. Some of you may be here because you are now thinking about food storage for your family. After everything that went on in 2020 and with grocery stores and shortages and grocery store shelves being bare in some areas, some for longer than others. If everything locked down again today, if you suddenly had no grocery money or the store shelves were completely empty, how long and how well could you feed your family with what you currently have in your home? You do not want to stock up on rice and beans. There's definitely a time and place for rice and beans, but when it comes to your food storage that you're intentionally building slowly over time, you want to buy things that your family's eating on a regular basis. So where do you start? I suggest baby steps. Deconstruct one meal at a time, slowly compiling a master list of the items that you use throughout the month. The goal is to figure out how much of each item your family goes through in an average month. We're going to keep it simple and start with one breakfast, one lunch, and one dinner. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to give you some very simple meals to start with. These are just ideas to give you the tools to create this list using your own menu. For breakfast, we're gonna choose oatmeal. To make oatmeal, we need oats, brown sugar, and raisins. For lunch, we're gonna have tuna salad on crackers. So we will need tuna, mayonnaise, relish, and crackers. For dinner, we're going to have spaghetti. All you need are spaghetti noodles and your choice of sauce. We are a family of 10, so we're going to calculate our ingredients based on our family size. You need to calculate the ingredients you need for each meal based on your family size. The goal is to feed your family these three meals once a week for a month. I calculated the total for all the ingredients I would need for my family of 10 to eat the meals that I mentioned four times in a month, so that would be 12 meals total. We would need two boxes of oatmeal, two packages of brown sugar, two large things of raisins, 24 cans of tuna, two jars of relish, two jars of mayonnaise, four boxes of Ritz-style crackers, eight pounds of spaghetti noodles, and eight jars of sauce. Now I do most of our shopping at Walmart and Aldi, so I'm very familiar with the prices. In fact, I double checked them on my Walmart app just to be sure. And I could feed those 12 meals to my family of 10 for $65. As often as you can afford it, pick up another meal or set of ingredients and purchase enough for an additional two to four weeks. Remember, if your budget is extremely tight and the best you can do is $5 to $10 a week on food storage, that's still $5 to $10 more than you were putting toward food storage before now. Every bit counts and consistency is huge. The further you get into your food storage journey, the more you'll find yourself thinking outside the box. For example, if you have just a few simple ingredients on hand like flour, salt, yeast, and maybe sugar or honey, you could make all of your bread products from scratch. Your sandwich bread, rolls, buns, tortillas, even biscuits. If you have flour, salt, and eggs, you can even make pasta. If you don't currently make any of your bread items from scratch, or you've never made homemade pasta, now is the time to start. Look up recipes and YouTube videos. The ability to cook and bake from scratch is incredibly empowering. Once a month when I do my monthly grocery shopping for my bulk items, I get four rotisserie chickens from Sam's Club. They're less than $5 each. I bring them home and my kids take the meat off the bones and I freeze the meat from each chicken in a gallon freezer bag. Those can be used for so many different things throughout the month. But one of the best parts about those chickens is I use the bones from each individual bird and I put them in the Instant Pot and I fill it to the max with water and I pressure cook it on high for about an hour and a half. Each chicken provides seven quarts of chicken stock that I will then pressure can and stick in the pantry. So every month I pressure can about 28 quarts of chicken stock from $20 worth of chicken. And plus I've got the meat in my freezer. Start to change your habits and adopt the mindset of every bit counts. Do you have leftover pinto beans and Spanish rice? Freeze the beans and use them in enchiladas. 
freeze the rice, and add it to taco soup. Can you tell we eat a lot of Mexican in our house? I challenge you for the month of October to keep track of your suppers, not just what you make, but how much you use of each ingredient. For example, a family favorite in our house is creamy salsa chicken. So I would write down two chicken breasts, a can of corn, a can of black beans, a can of pinto beans, a jar of salsa, and eight ounces of cream cheese. I also use taco seasoning, but I make that from scratch with the seasonings I already have on hand. So I wouldn't necessarily write down all my seasonings and spices. This is a really good way to get an accurate average of what your family is eating on a month to month basis. Keep a piece of paper close by in the kitchen so you remember to do it every night. At the end of the month, you can total up all of the ingredients that you used. How much chicken, how many onions, how many pounds of cheese, I don't know about you, but we are total creatures of habit around here. We have a lot of variety in our diet, but the menu that I use on a month to month basis doesn't really change a whole lot. Here's a quick look at our master dinner menu. Now this list is from September, so it may include specific items from the back of the pantry that I'd like to intentionally work into our menu for last month. Things like Israeli couscous or quinoa that we just don't use on a regular basis and I'd like to go ahead and use it up. But overall, month to month, our menu stays pretty much the same. At the end of the month, you may decide to start building your food storage based on your October foods list. I hope the biggest takeaway from all of this is that food storage does not need to be all about rice, beans, and processed foods. Start building your pantry and food storage based on what you eat now. Join me on Instagram at Pursuit of Simplicity for our October challenge. Use the hashtag food storage challenge. Thanks for watching.